what is going on waters and farmers of tamaris welcome back to another video in today's episode i'm gonna show you guys the complete guide for multiple melee cavalry marches in call of dragons this video is gonna be covering pretty much everything that i have learned by playing the multiple cavalry marches in the game if you are still new to the channel make sure you subscribe for more content turn on that bell notification and never miss out like the video share it with your friends drop some comments down below let's get the party started Alright Warriors of Tamaris, this is Season 2 Plus and over the last couple of months I have spent all my speed up to try and train 1.3 million cavalry to create 5 cavalry marches in the game. Unfortunately the game developers decided to increase the troop capacity, right now I can only make 4 cavalry marches. This video is going to be covering a bunch of different topics, everything that I have learned so far in the last couple of months. We will look at the strength and the weaknesses of these multiple cavalry marches. We're gonna look at all the artifacts. You're gonna see some hidden secrets that you may not have known about multiple cavalry marches in the game. Now in the future, I plan on switching to the Spring Warden faction to try out Elk Rider marches, maybe four Elk Rider marches, or I could try three Forest Eagles and two Elk Rider marches. But that is going to be in a couple of months from now. In the meantime, if you want to see some Elk Rider gameplay in Call of Dragons, I recommend you check out this YouTuber known as Parvi Sage. He has some good Elk Rider gameplay. He is an expert with Elk Riders. Check out his channel. I'm going to link his channel in the comment section down below. We shall begin the video by checking out the cavalry take advantage of the unyielding rush in the Call of Dragons. So we're going to go to the training camp and then see what the unyielding rush is all about. So Unyielding Rush is divided into two parts. Now the first part says, March speed increases when approaching the target legion. Now this is the part that is used by every single melee cavalry in the Call of Dragons. Basically when you approach any target, you gain some march speed, your march speed increases. Now the second part says, After colliding with a ranged legion, the hero commanding this legion gains 1000 rage. This effect can be triggered once every 12 seconds. So this is the biggest advantage of the unyielding rush in the call of dragons when you collide with a ranged unit you get 1000 rage now your enemies are gonna be archers mages and other elk riders all the troop types that i just mentioned are ranged units and you are going to get 1000 rage now the unyielding rush can have advantages and disadvantages at the same time the advantage is that you get 1000 rage against range unit and then you just obliterate them on the map. Now the disadvantage is that it is very very difficult to catch up with units that are moving a little bit fast. That is the disadvantage of the unyielding rush. You can also use that as an advantage if you are trying to get away from your enemies. So how does the unyielding rush work? Usually, your cavalry is going to register the location of the enemy. When they get close to that location, their march speed is going to increase. But here is the thing. If you are playing against other cavalry who are moving away, your hero is going to miss out on that location. So you register that location and then the enemy moves and then unyielding rush is going to try to register the next location and the enemy moves again. It's just going to keep you behind all the cavalry that you are trying to chase. So that is the disadvantage of the unyielding rush. You can also use it as an advantage to yourself as you guys are going to see in some of my future videos that I'm going to post on the channel. So this is the unyielding rush has its advantages, has its disadvantages. The advantage is that you just obliterate all the all the ranged units in the game, which is a good thing. Next topic of the video is going to be about the surrounded legion damage bonus in the game of Call of Dragons. When you surround a legion by multiple melee troop type, you get surrounded damage bonus, which is what takes these units to the next level. This is one of the main reasons I decided to create the 4 march cavalry in the game, because you can combine the unyielding rush and the surrounded damage bonus to wreck everyone in the game. Now you're gonna see some gameplay towards the end of the video, it's gonna show you the true strength of the unyielding rush and the surrounded damage. So let's continue exploring the surrounded damage in the call of dragons. Now when you surround a legion, when you surround an enemy with two legions, you get 2% surrounded damage dealt. When you surround with three legions, you get 5% surrounded damage. 
When you attack with four legions, you get 10% surrounded damage. And if it's five legions, you get up to 15% surrounded damage. I think it caps off at 15%. Correct me down below if I am mistaken. Now, this is kind of like you have just created an extra skill slot for all of your heroes in the game. 15% surrounded damage bonus is just disgusting. You can just destroy anything on the map. Now, your biggest enemies are going to be other infantry, of course, because they can interrupt the surrounded damage bonus. So let's go to one of the infantry talent trees and then we see what is going on. So we have Mr. Goresh over here. When we go to the talent tree, we go all the way up here. We have this flank protection. If you take this all the way up to level 5, your legion takes 75% less bonus damage from being surrounded. So it's going to be 75% of the number of legions surrounding you for example if five legions are surrounding you 75 percent of 15 percent so that's how it's gonna work i usually don't recommend anyone take this because if you run multiple cavalry you will know to never ever attack an infantry and in the open field most of the time you are not attacked by cavalry so it's better to go with something like encouraging dance which is gonna give you lots of rage and help you cycle the goresh rage skill more often so this is something that you need to look out for when you are running multiple cavalry marches you should try and avoid infantry at all costs especially goresh and skogul these two combined together will destroy your multiple cavalry marches as soon as you see them you make a u-turn and you run for the hills the next topic of the video is going to be the March Speed in the Call of Dragons, which is the most important talent or skills that you should pick for your multiple cavalry in the game. March Speed is absolutely important. You don't want to miss out on that. So I'm going to bring out four marches just to explain the importance of March Speed. So when you're fighting, with your, when you're fighting your enemy with your four cavalry marches, sometimes the enemy tends to move away. Now when the enemy moves away, one of your legions is kind of gonna fall behind, especially if another enemy has put a negative speed debuff on your legion. Now you're gonna have like only three of your legion fighting the enemy and your surrounded damage bonus has fallen off all the way down to 5% instead of the 10% with the four marches. So this march is gonna try to catch up, but if you have enough speed, you can negate any negative speeds put on your heroes. Now it is important to build melee cavalry with march speed because if you're not moving fast enough the melee cavalry combat distance is very very small it's gonna make your deputy not cast their rage skill because the enemy has moved out of your distance so having march speed is absolutely important now all my cavalry move with a march speed of 64 percent I have found that to be very very useful for me because it allows me to maintain the pressure on my enemy and keep the 10% surrounded damage bonus dealt. Now I'm going to show you this artifact here which you can use with your cavalry this spring bird feather right here. Now if you look at the skills it says your friendly legion marches get some march speed as well. Sometimes you have heroes like Walder who can hit you with a negative speed debuff. So when you hit the spring bird feather, it kind of removes all the negative debuffs placed on all your heroes. Now being fast enough can also make you not miss any rage skill for your deputy commanders, especially if your enemy moves away. So march speed is hands down the most important for the multiple cavalry marches in the game. Now when we go to the talent tree of the mobility, you're going to see that there are some awesome march speed talents in the game. Now, a lot of people don't know why the game developers put this, so maybe today I help explain them. So you see the skills. When your legion launches a normal attack, they have a 10% chance to gain haste, increasing their march speed by, I believe, 30% if you take this to level 5. So when you fight your enemies, you have people like Velin and Walder. They can really slow you down significantly, making you not be able to catch up with any enemy that is moving. So when you have this skill with you, you can remove any negative speed debuff and maintain the pressure on your enemy. I believe there is another one somewhere here where you gain haste. Is it this one? Yup, here. When casting raid skill, your legion gains haste, increasing their march speed by 3% for 3 seconds. This is going to help you keep the pressure. Any enemy that is trying to get away from you, 
well you have the match speed to catch up with them maintain the pressure maintain constant surrounded damage the match speed most important skill of melee cavalry combat in the game the artifacts that we have in the game are the best complementary elements for your cavalry marches in the game the most important one for you is going to be the blink artifact in the call of dragons now because of the march speed problem in the game as i just explained your enemies kind of move away when you have the blink artifact you can eliminate that problem as you can see here i have taken mine all the way up to level 5 because it is the mvp artifact that i have for my multiple cavalry marches now this artifact you're gonna use it to intercept all the ground legions so basically if the legions are moving you go and blink in front of them you know the you know the difficulty of the unyielding rush when you are chasing other cavalry or other units that are moving fast so if you can intercept them with the blink artifact you're gonna make sure that each one of your marches gets to do their rage skill and on top of that you maintain constant surrounded damage bonus throughout so this artifact is the MVP for your multiple cavalry marches. Now we're going to continue talking about this artifact in regards to flying legions in the game. This artifact is a game changer against flying legions as well. As we all know, you cannot intercept a flying legion, but this artifact can give you the upper hand when you fight the flying legions. Now to use this artifact, you're going to need one specific hero, and that is going to be Mr... Forondil, where is he? Right here. You only put the blink artifact on Forondil. If you don't have Forondil, then it's not going to be super effective. When we go to the talent tree for Forondil, there are two skills that are going to benefit from the blink artifact. You know, the unyielding rush is going to keep you behind your enemies. Now, like the flying legions, they can easily get away. But if you have the blink artifact on Forondil, you can give, your chair, you can give yourself a better chance to take down that enemy even if you don't completely defeat them you can slow them down well enough to let all your other legions catch up and pull off their rage skill all of them so you're gonna pick this skill over here let's go to this talent tree here to put everything together yep so you're gonna pick this cyclone seal when casting Rage Skill, inflict slow on the target legion, reducing their match speed by 15% for 3 seconds. So you take a look at the trajectory of the flying ranged unit. You blink in front of them. They are coming to you. You are going towards them. You get unyielding rush from the first second. You hit them with the cowardice. You slow them down by 15%. But it doesn't end there. When you pick the skill known as Blindside, when your legion enters battle, they slow the target legion, reducing their march speed by 30% for 10 seconds. So now you have this one and this one working together. I don't know if they stuck. I did not pay attention. I did not look. Please collect, correct me down below if I am mistaken. So with these two together, I can say you get 45% speed reduction on the flying legion. Now your Forondil has done his rage skill. Your other three cavalry marches have caught up. They do two rage skill. Now, since Forondil was closer to this enemy, I mean, he is able to pull off a second rage skill like four seconds later before the enemy can eventually get away. So you're going to need this blink artifact to help you against the range unit, not because you can intercept them, but you can slow them down well enough for all of your cavalry to unleash their rage skill and not have maybe only the primary do the rage skill and then the deputy misses out. When it comes to the forest eagles, I don't believe you will be able to get this 1000 rage right away because the forest eagles are not flying legions. I mean, they are not ranged legions. However, you're going to slow them down by 30% and you can still get all of your heroes to do their rage skill before that flying legion eventually get away. So the spring bird feather, I mean, the blink artifact is the MVP for your cavalry marches. Now, there are some awesome artifacts in the game. We have this Forondil artifact right here. Now this artifact is gonna clone one of your legion. Now let's say you have four cavalry marches. You use this artifact, it creates a clone. Now you're gonna have five cavalry marches. Your surrounded damage bonus goes from 10% all the way to 5%. So this artifact is not completely useless. It can give all of your marches an additional 5% damage dealt for 30 seconds if the enemies don't kill it.
So do not underestimate this artifact if you are running multiple cavalry marches. So let me show you a quick example of my marches and you see how all the artifacts are working together. I have this configuration right here. This should be the spring bird feather. So this is everything that I have so far. And over here, right now I have this one because I am hunting darklings. If I am chasing ground legions, I'm going to put this thing right here, storm arrow. Like if there is a farmer killer in our territory, I use the storm arrows. If I am fighting on the ground a lot, I use this. Now if I see a bunch of range, range units because they don't move fast, I switch this with the king slayer. Yep, I leave this one on Mr. Emrys because it's just awesome. Now this one is on Alistair because it adds some speed, speed synchronization. And then the spring bird feather, I trigger it every now and then if I have a negative speed debuffs on my legions. So these are the artifacts. Now I could use the Corondil artifact as well. Where is it? It is over here. I can switch it and put it on. Now this is going to take my surrounded damage bonus dealt from 10% all the way up to 15%. So you shouldn't underestimate this artifact. You switch a bunch of different artifacts on Forondil and then you keep the other ones constant. Let us continue exploring the marches that I use for the multiple cavalry marches in the game. So this is what I use right now. I'm going to show you guys why I have these marches like this. So we're going to be attacking ranged units mostly. We get 1000 range, 1000 rage from the first second. So I have for Rondil, who will put cowardice on the enemy that I am attacking. So that legion is going to miss three normal attack. Theodore is going to put this skill over here, which is going to put a bruise on the enemy, minus 30% HP. So that is that. The next is Emrys. Emrys can do lots and lots of damage. And since we are surrounding the enemy, you are going to trigger the hidden Emrys skill over here. Emrys Legion also deal 12% more skill damage when attacking targets that have been surrounded. So that is going to work well for him. And then you have here Alistair and Nika. Nika is one of my secret weapons in the game. You might be like, why the heck are you even using this commander? Well, Nika has 1500 skill damage, which is just nuts. And then she can like increase hero skill damage dealt by 10% and also gives you counter attack damage by 20%, which is just awesome. Now, the good thing with Nika is if you look at her awakening, when Nika Legion launches a normal attack, they have a 50% chance to deal damage if the target has fewer than 50 units remaining which can trigger every two seconds damage factor 500. This is another secret fighting style that you can use with Nika. I'm going to upload a video in the future. You're going to see how I take advantage of this normal attack here when I fight other cavalry marches that are chasing me down. And then we have Thea and Kinara. Thea is going to put a shield on one of my legions, which is awesome. And then Kinara is another secret weapon that I have here. Kinara is going to do damage factor of 1400 and then she's going to inflict feeble on the enemy that enemy is going to do minus 15 percent damage to the, one of the cavalry that they are attacking which is just very powerful and then the awakening skill of kinara also makes it so that she can put a defense break on the target reducing defense by 20 percent and also reducing their march speed making it easy for all my heroes to maintain 10 percent surrounded damage bonus dealt and keep the pressure on the enemy and prevent them from not getting away. So these are the marches that I currently use. I sometimes switch Thea with Madeline, depending on what I am trying to achieve on the field. Let us check out some talent trees and march speed synchronization for your cavalry heroes in the game. Make sure you synchronize all your cavalry to move at the same speed. That way they can attack at the same time and get the unyielding rush surrounded damage bonus maintain the pressure and not miss out on a skill damage because the enemy has moved away from you. So you should find a reference point for all of your marches. So mine was Mr. Emrys right here. As you can see here, I have a cavalry march speed bonus of 8%. Then I went to the talent tree, picked up 6 from here, got 5 from here, 15 from here, 10, 10, and another 10. 
When you combine all of them, the march speed is 64% for Emrys. So this is the Emrys talent tree that I use. Do not be afraid to use march speed from all the three branches because it's the most important skill for your melee cavalry. So take advantage of it. When we go to Forondil, Forondil has 16% march speed from his skill. Now we go to the talent tree and then we fill the rest. Don't forget that Theodore also add 10% to Forondil. So that makes it 26%. We got 6 from here, 5, 15. We only pick 2 from here to cover the remaining march speed. And then we got 10 from here. That is 64% march speed for Forondil. And then we have Alistair over here. So Alistair does not have a lot of march speed. So from the talent tree, we pick 15 from here. And then if you look over here, there is a reduction of 2% march speed. So you have to take that into consideration. So we come over here, we get 10. We get another 10 from here. We get another 6 from here. And then to compensate for the remaining march speed, we have this artifact, which gives Alistair another 18% march speed. And also to compensate for more negative march speed, I have this thing here to like add some more match speed because I, leave, I believe my Alistair is below by 1%. So I have this giving it 0.61%, almost 1%. So they all stay at the same march speed. Now my third march, which is either Thea or Madeline primary. So let's go with Madeline. We go over here in the talent tree. I pick six from here. I get 10 from here. I get 10 from here, making it 26. And then when we go to the spring bird feather, it's going to add another 37.5%, which adds up to 64 or 64.5. I lost count. So all my covering marches stay together. And this is the talent tree that I like to use for them. Just pick a reference point for your cavalry and make sure you have a lot of march speed. Mine move at a march speed of 65% because I want to catch up with any ranged unit that is trying to get away from me. I build this cavalry specifically for ranged units, nothing else. I see infantry, I go the other way. I see other cavalry marches coming towards me, I go the other way. I have a lot of march speed. I take advantage of the unyielding rush in the game. It can give you an advantage and a disadvantage. If anyone is chasing you, you can run away without them catching up. They have to intercept you from the front. So I value march speed more than anything for melee cavalry in the game. Warpet are a good addition to your multiple cavalry marches in the game. You can use a bunch of different types. Because right now I was thinking of using like four sand lizards to give me four times the healing. Imagine, get, imagine getting two star sand lizard four times and then using all four of them on your melee cavalry. The healing is going to be insane. You can use up to four golden rock so that you generate rage very, very fast. You can also provide some healing for yourself, gain even more rage and do some crazy damage on the field. You can also use the Venomous Lizard if you like. There are so many options for you to use in terms of Warpet. You have the Berserker Frederick that you can use for your Forondil. And then for your Emrys, you go with the Golden Rock. And then the rest, you use Golden Rock as well. Or you can go with some crazy healing with the Four Sand Lizard. That's going to look awesome. You can also use the Snow Peak Rock on your Thea and Kinara if that's what you're rocking on the open field that should work really really well the good thing with discovery is that you are trying to take advantage of the unyielding rush so you're gonna see some video gameplays towards the end of the video it's gonna show you exactly the true nature of the combination of the unyielding rush and the surrounded legion bonus and to add something about march speed in the call of dragons the faster you move the easier it is for all of your legions to do their rage skill because you will be able to close the distance very, very fast. You don't miss out on any rage skill, especially when the enemy moves away from you. All right, Warriors of Tamaris, up next, we're going to check out some applications of these multiple cavalry marches in the Call of Dragons. Like where can you use them? When can you use them? I personally think that this is the best decision that I have made for my account in Call of Dragons. I have no regrets whatsoever for training this for March Cavalry. I am very, very happy with what I got. 
Now your number one mission is to use surrounded damage and unyielding rush to destroy ranged units. Now your menu is gonna consist of archers, mages and elk riders. Those are the people that you try to kill. If you see maybe another one cavalry running around then you can try and kill that cavalry. You stay away from infantry at all costs because it is a waste of your time. So let's go to the infantry and I show you why you shouldn't even bother attacking any infantry with your cavalry. You're just wasting your time. Infantry have this skill known as the perseverance. Each time the legion loses 3% of its unit, their physical defense increases by 1.5% up to 50%. Only take effect when a legion is composed entirely of infantry units. Well, guess what? Cavalry use physical attack. So when you attack an infantry, you go very close and they just get stronger every second. So you don't want to waste your time fighting any infantry with multiple cavalry marches. That infantry might also have the flank protection, which can work against your multiple cavalry. And guess what? You could be attacking a Goresh and a Skogul, which is the worst thing you should ever do for your multiple cavalry marches. Continuing with the application of the multiple cavalry marches, it is very, very good at completing PvE events like killing Darklings on the map. I don't take time completing PvE events in the game. I can burn all my CP within no time. I can launch one rally and then send all my other three cavalry to join different rallies in the game. I can take advantage of the negative CP in the game. For instance, if my CP is like five remaining, I launch one rally and then I send all my other three or four cavalry to join four different rallies and I like take advantage of the negative CP in the game. Now in Roots of War, Multiple cavalry marches is excellent. You can use it to swarm buildings. You don't need to launch a rally on anything. You just come out and you swarm that building by that self. In Roots of War, every second counts. You could lose the war with just one point. But if you have multiple cavalry, you don't need to wait for any rally. You just go there by yourself and get the job done. Now what else can you do with your cavalry? You can act as the policeman of your alliance. If there is a farmer killer coming in your territory, well guess what? You don't need any help, you bring your cavalry, you go by yourself and you take them out. Now in the open field when your enemies are retreating, guess what? You bring this cavalry, you annihilate each one you see on the map, they have no chance. The ambush with this cavalry is next level crazy. And I'm gonna show you guys a few video clips towards the end of the video. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is everything that I have learned about melee cavalry in the Call of Dragons. I have no regrets whatsoever. I think it's the best decision I have ever done for my account in the game. Now, I went out of my way to train this cavalry to do experiments and bring you guys the findings. And I have done it so far. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. You like it for the YouTube algorithm. Share it with your friends who might find this very, very useful. Like I said in the introduction, in the near future, I'm going to be switching to the Spring Warden to test out different cavalry composition. I will do that experiment and show you guys the videos. Unfortunately, I won't be switching anytime soon. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know down below what you thought of the video. If you've seen something that I missed out, if you have any other additions that you see I did not mention, feel free to comment down below. We are all learning. And if you guys comment, we can let other people know as well. I didn't want to bore you guys with one infantry in front, four, mar four range marches behind. That is boring. That is why I decided to create four cavalry marches. Give you guys something different. So make sure you subscribe for more content. Enjoy the ambush that is coming your way right now. Above, conquer below.
simple place, but a simple one. For the Black Iron Wood! Do not yield! Ready to move. I'll be as quick as I can. Order received. Yeah. 